Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. About six topics for this video. Starting with the first one, Kursk region. Remember the NATO slash Ukrainian uh, troops invaded Russia in Kursk successfully. And uh, it seems like now they're pushed back by the Russians big time. Even they uh, recognize that. So they confirm that. I have an article from the Telegraph telling that uh, thing that the Russians are actually uh, retaking half of the lost Kursk territory. So the Russians took half back. Well, I don't think it should have happened in the first place if it was by me. But that's the first uh, topic. The second one, we're going to discuss another, another major drone attack, Russian drone attack on Ukraine, and we'll find out what they hit. And they also used some missiles destroying some facility in Mykolaiv, the port of Mykolaiv. I will show you maps as well. Next one. Again, the big liar Zelensky, not that he's the only one, claims that the North Korean military is fighting alongside the Russian military in Ukraine. Well, I guess uh, the Russians are copying the opposite, uh, the enemies, the friends, the partners. This is what Zelensky claims. But we find out as well as uh, that North Korea mobilized 1.4 million people. 1.4 million people joined the military in order to fight the enemies, which are whomever uh, the woodchuck designate as the enemy. We have two articles around um, about that topic. Next topic, armor facility disabled in Ukrainian port. There are some videos, I watch them. Uh, there are some missiles just dropping on some facility, destroying some tanks and so on. Next topic. Next topic is an article that wants something from me and you know how fond I am. Because they want me a lot. These guys are these guys. The Western media, the operatives, are preparing you and I for a big news. And I will let you know what the big news is. They're starting slow, easy, and they will go and they will just tell us, well, we needed to do this. I said this many times before. It will happen. It is happening. It is happening, my friends. And that is, I think, that just prepare us for a big announcement that the American troops will be deployed in, or they are deployed already in Ukraine, something that I don't think some of us had any doubt about it. A new model, it's a new model. And the last topic has to do with Ukraine thermal power capacity, which has been destroyed in the proportion of almost gone. Winter is coming. So let's start with the first topic, which is Russia retakes half of lost Kursk territory. Now, this doesn't come from the Russians. It's reported by the Telegraph. Let's see who found that out. Russia has recaptured half of the territory it lost to Ukraine in Kursk, a region central to Volodymyr Zelensky's plan to defeat Vladimir Putin. <laughs> this is so baboonish. It's not about Zelensky fighting Putin. Are you crazy? It's about big economic financial interests destroying or taking over Russia in order to have access to China later. That is to make sure that the globe belongs to them, not to Adolf. And uh, a senior Russian commander from Chechnya said an estimated 50,000 troops were pushing back Ukrainian forces who either had to flee or end up in the cauldron. We're going to show you a map on that one. And I'm quoting, approximately half of the territory that was occupied by the enemy has already been liberated, said Major General Apti Alawudinov. Well-connected Russian and Ukrainian military bloggers have been reporting since Saturday that Moscow's troops have pushed through sectors of Ukraine's front lines in Kursk, the uh, left flank, that is. Mr. Zelensky says insisted. No, we're not going to insist with Zelensky. So where is that located? This is the map of Ukraine. This is Kursk Oblast in Russia. This is the border. Here is the successful 
Western or uh, Ukrainian incursion. Now, this map is not updated. Uh, it says over there 15, but the Russians pushed and broke through the defenses of the Ukrainians on the left flank right here, advancing this way and probably cutting these guys, encircling them and there or retreating. We're going to find out. These guys here have no chance to go up or right to the east or to the north. So I'm assuming, <coughs> all right, I think uh, this is what's going to happen. The Russians are going to come over Red Rover. These guys are going to come from here. These guys will be over in no time. And these guys have a decision to make. Continue or just go back to the border if they have any defenses over there. So this is regarding the... Uh, according to uh, the Chechen commander, half, almost half of the Kursk territory that was occupied is liberated. I don't think that should have happened anyway, but uh, or at least um, what I mean is the successful Ukrainian slash NATO incursion in Russia should not have happened, but it was stopped. It was stopped and it takes some time to bring this back where they belong. Next topic. This comes from Ukraine Forum. It is from today, the 16th of October 2024. Ukrainian forces shut down 51 enemy Shahed UAVs overnight. I covered yesterday or two days before an article where these guys claim, I think it was Zelensky, who claimed, which I think it must have been some mistake over there. They claimed that the Russians did not use Shahed drones in almost a month. But I was reporting every day uh, of some uh, drones coming over were not Shahed. I'm pretty sure I uh, covered that with Shahed or Shahid drones dropping on that, the um, Ukrainian territory. Ukrainian defense forces shut down 51 Russian attack UAVs overnight, while 60 drones disappeared from radars. So that would make what? 111 drones, correct? So they shut down 51 and 60 drones disappeared. So did they disappear because they hit the target and then they disintegrated and then therefore disappeared? Or just disappeared, dis decided to go back to mommy? All right. It says from uh, 7 o'clock p.m. on October 15 to 7 o'clock a.m. on October uh, 16, Russian troops struck the Donetsk region with an S-300-400 anti-aircraft guided missile launched from the temporary occupied part of the Donetsk region. 1KH-59 guided mice missile was launched from the Chernihiv region from the airspace of the Kursk region and 136 attack UAVs from Russia's Kursk, Orel and Primorsko Akhtarsk. Now, here is the evidence, the 51, right? Or the... This is the evidence these guys, these guys provide, but if the Russians provide the same kind of evidence, it's unacceptable. The aircraft anti aircraft missile forces, mobile fire groups, and units of the Ukraine Defense Forces were involved in repelling the attack. Again, they give us the same spiel 51 enemy, pop, 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 shut down. They were shut down in Sumy, Cherkasy, Kirovohrad, Ternopil, Kherson. Kharkiv, Zitomir, Donetsk, Dinepopetrovsk, Mikolaiv, Kiev, Poltava, Chernihiv, Cherkafi, Cherkav, Chernih, Chernivsky region. So those are, let me show you, no further than here. I was turning the pill right here. They stopped the um, Polish part of Ukraine or the Hungarian part of Ukraine or... Okay, so this is the area. I didn't hear uh, Vinitsia or Odessa, but it was Mykolaiv. So all this part was attacked. Next topic. The New Voice of Ukraine reports that North Korea is providing combat troops and weapons to Russia, says this guy. Do you believe this guy? No, I don't, uh, un unless I verify. So this is a statement. It's not like could, might, uh, maybe, something. It's right there. It's, an, it's a statement right there. I don't even have to go further than that. This comes from 51 minutes ago, today on the 16th. So I know he made some comments before about that, but now again he comes with the same thing. Could it be true? Yeah, it was 100% possible. Is it probable? I would give it 
I don't know, 20%, 20%. Uh, but nevertheless, um, they tell us the King Jong-un enslaves over 20 million Koreans and so on. Um, I don't think that's Ukraine's uh, actually business to um, tell us what's in uh, North Korea, as I don't think it's North Korea's business to tell us what's going on in Ukraine. They can, they can, but if you open your mouth, then the other ones can open their mouth as well. So Zelensky, who dragged Ukraine in a war with Russia, nuclear power, uh, tells us about uh, the other guys enslaving. Uh, so far, it's the Ukrainian nation that's getting exterminated, not the North Korean nation. So I think he's a bigger butcher than the other guy so far. Now you can say, hey, it's in self-defense or defending the country. I think that's BS. That's BS. That could have been avoided in uh, 1991. Then they had a chance uh, later in 1994. And then the last one was in December, October, November 2021. They had a chance in with the Minsk agreements or they had a chance not to overthrow a legitimate government democratically elected of Ukraine or Viktor Yanukovych in 2014. All these things could have been could have been points of preventing this situation. But no, they did it. Who's they? The guys who tell us that they spread democracy and freedom around the globe by having brothers killing one another and uh, for what? For some financial and uh, military interest or economic interest. And again, we have this article coming from yesterday, North Korean fighting in Ukraine alongside Russians, Zelensky says. Okay, always this is the question, what can you do? Well, I tell you exactly what Zelensky wants to do, because I know I've been there. Uh, he wants NATO to say, well, these guys are attacking, that means uh, we can do the same thing. We can come over and we fight alongside Ukrainians for Zelensky's time and then fight the Russians. And then when the Russians are going to nuke us, uh, we're going to... Then what? Did you think that far? I'm not saying that uh, now it gives a carte blanche to the Russians to go and occupy whatever territories. But uh, remember who came over, who came close. It was always... And that's the word I'm using, always, NATO, coming closer, coming closer, coming closer. Now, obviously, if you're uh, five feet from me, you know, I don't have to be too much, uh, you know, pay, paying too much attention. Once you move a little bit closer, I pay attention. And then you come closer, then you can hit me in the face and I cannot react. Then I say, back off, mofo. That's normal. And I understand what these guys don't understand. Remember, Ukraine was supposed to be neutral according to 1994 Budapest Memorandum. But in 2014, that neutrality was changed. By whom? By an illegal overthrowing of the government. Coup d'etat in Ukraine organized, helped and instigated and very much agreed upon. By whom? By the guys who said that, ah, no inch eastward with NATO. The same guys. So, well, you see, things. these things are facts, are not, well, imagination or anything like this. You don't like the facts? We don't care. Who's we? I talk uh, the plural, okay, when I talk about myself. <laughs> Just kidding, right here. Ukrainska Pravda. Find out that the Ukrainians are telling us that North Korea reports on 1.4 million mobilized people ready for holy war. Why do you need these guys when you have nuclear weapons? I, I don't know what I mean. Why do you need these? Send everybody home and make sure you got the hand like this on top of the button. If someone shoots you, it just falls over there. I'm okay. So you don't need to have all these guys. Oh, you need because you're a repressive um, government. Yeah, probably you are. But the mobilization, meaning if you get 1.4 million people mobilized and you give them weapons, what could it happen? They turn around and shoot you. So isn't that kind of like baboonish? Is it true? All right, let's see what these guys are saying. North Korea has reported the mobilization of 1.4 million citizens who are eager <clears throat> to fight in a holy war against whom? And kill the enemies who encroach on the sovereignty of the country led by King Jong-un. And I'm quoting, if a war breaks out, the ROK, Republic of Korea, will be wiped off the map. Well, that's not who you need to talk to, man. As it wants a war 
we are willing to put an end to its existence. That's not them. According to data available, more than 1.4 million youth league officials and youth and students across the country volunteered to join or rejoin the Korean People's Army on 14 and 15 of October. Um, as I always tell you, if you have a broken pipe in your home and water is coming in, you just don't use duct tape or you don't use, you know, try to stop it with a duct tape or you use squeegees and uh, uh, how do you call it? towels and you just shh on the buckets and all that. You don't do that. You go in the basement or you go wherever you have that little, little faucet and you turn it off, click, click, click. <coughs> And then you stop the water coming from wherever the water comes is provided to you by the city, by the well, by wherever you got, whatever connection you got. And then you go and fix that with duct tape, if you want, with nails, <laughs> whatever you want, however you want to fix it. So the leaking hose is South Korea. The water coming in is the United States of America and the guys in charge of the United States of America. You want to fix it? You talk to those guys. You deal with those guys that control us. And then you fix that with your brothers, South Koreans. Not, you don't destroy these guys. What's going to happen? The guys over there will keep pouring water in your house. But if it's not South Korea, it's going to be someone else. It's going to be Japan. It's going to be another pipe that breaks. Or the same pipe breaking somewhere else. And the same water comes onto, uh, what are you going to blow up now, uh, Japan? Then they're going to activate someone else. And someone else. And someone else. Remember, they are far away. They are fighting from far away and you brothers are fighting over there. The Korean brothers, the, um, how do you call them, uh, the Slav, Slavic brothers, the Slavs are fighting. So the Ukrainians, the Russians are fighting, the Koreans are fighting and we are just fine doing here. And if these guys decide that it is, it is profitable financially and to control, to start the fight here, they will start it. I guarantee you that. 100%. If they consider that this country, this great country, needs to become, become a little bit smaller or something, uh, you know, some people must be, mm -mm, they will do it. They will, in the name of something very honorable. We always, we always push honorable things. But somehow, a lot of millions are... Why? Because they're bad dudes. All right, let's go to the next uh, article here. North Korea says 1.4 million applied to join army amid tensions with South. Again, that's not the problem. The problem is a few thousand miles to the east of Korean Peninsula. Russia today. Armor facility disabled in Ukrainian port. Russian Ministry of Defense video. This is the video I'm not going to play. This is the port of Mykolaiv. And I'm going to tell you that right here is going to be two missiles dropping like poop club right there unfortunately according to the russian ministry of defense 10 vehicles including tanks were destroyed in the missile strike the ministry has reported a ukrainian facility involved in the production and repair of armored vehicles in the port city of nikolaev has been disabled by a russian missile strike the defense ministry in moscow reported on wednesday all right they did um they released uh, videos. I told you what you need to see. I am not going to put this one because of YouTube. Now, where is that located? Here we have Ukraine. Mykolaiv is right here. This is the Black Sea. This is the Crimean Peninsula. This is the baboonish country of Romania. And here is Mykolaiv. Here. So somewhere in this area, the attack occurred. Let's see what these guys are saying. Sergei Lebedev, coordinator of Nikolaev's pro-Russian underground state, that the Russian troops launched five strikes on the armored vehicles factory. Up to a dozen pieces of equipment were destroyed. More than 30 military personnel were killed or wounded. Um, is it true? I don't know. I saw a video. Is that a, a fake? I'm just reporting here. Is it possible? 100%. Probable? 98% or 99 all right, let's go to the next topic. These guys are going to get us ready when I'm pretty sure it's going to be pretty soon, very soon, maybe a day or two, maybe a week. I don't think it's going to be a week. It's going to be no more than, let's say, 72 hours until these guys are going to tell us, the media operatives, that actually we have uh, 
American troops um, uh, in Ukraine and front lines just helping uh, <clears throat> repairing uh, damaged um, or not maintain not repair because if you say repair that means they were blown up so you say uh, just um, I know, sometimes from uh, wear and tear things break so uh, let's put it that way but maybe maintain uh, Western weapons but they give us a baboonish BS how the Americans supposedly are communicating via video with the Ukrainians <clears throat> in the front line repairing the tanks. So they're gonna tell them through translators, yeah, you push that little thing over there, you turn it like this, you do like, and the guy, yeah, like this, is that good? Yeah, I'll keep the camera okay right now. Like, like this, you said? Yeah, mm -mm. I don't think so, right here. This is according to Defense News. How the US Army is helping Ukraine with frontline repairs. When I saw this, I was like, oh, so you come and tell us that uh, you actually are over there and repairing yourselves? Nah, 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 right here. It starts with a message on the secure messaging app Signal. Frontline units in Ukraine see an issue with their equipment and send notes to translators who soon share those with the US military. Then, operating from one of seven stations in Poland, not in Ukraine, American forces schedule video calls with the Ukrainians to help them repair the weapons. This is the process for the Army's virtual repair mission to help keep equipment working as long and as close to the front line as possible in Ukraine. Do you believe that? I don't believe that squat. Is it possible? 100%. Probable? 1%. 1%. I think this coming now. Why is now? It just started yesterday. I mean, this article is from where? From when? Let's see. This is from October 15th. That's yesterday. <laughs> so you tell me now, after almost three, year, three, three years of war, with about at least two years of providing howitzers, because if you look here, they show you a little um, right here, little weapon. You see that? That's an howitzer. It doesn't show you a tank. So these things were provided to Ukraine for at least two years. And you tell me now how they do it? What brought that down? I tell you, I think there's going to be someone else, or if not someone else, it's going to be even these operatives. They're going to come out and say, yeah, actually, they are over there operating. But, you know, that's actually, mm, this is what's going on. We just help them. And sometimes they send a unit over there just to help them um, figure things out quicker. I have to remind you, and if you don't know, I have to uh, let you know, inform you. Remember when the first Patriot systems were deployed to Kiev? All right. Supposedly it was one or two. You remember that first attack with Kinzals on those Patriot systems? Remember that there were videos and exploded explosions and those four, five, no, four, five, I think it was five Ukrainians were convicted and house arrest or how, whatever you call it now. Oh, it was on a parole. They were on pro parole. All right. They were set over there for about two or three years because they videotaped the explosions supposedly showing the enemy where the um, uh, Patriot systems were like the, these guys were not seeing it as, <laughs> because they shot them. So then they say, no, nothing was shut down. Uh, it's just this guy's videotape that was false. You can clearly see that the Russians reported that they're, they're, they were attacked. The, the Patriot were hit the systems, the launchers, not the, uh, you know what I mean? And then because you could see it, I mean, I saw that as well. And then, um, this guy said, um, no, nobody can do this. Only we, the Ukrainian Mil uh, Ministry of Defense, could show you videos and inform you. Why? Obviously, we don't, don't want to say that Patriot system was blown up by the Kinzals. So with that thing, when, when that happened, uh, they said, well, a, an American, uh, I can't remember exactly how they, they, what the term they used, but it was an American uh, to send a team to evaluate the damage which actually at the beginning was reported as no damage at all. Then they said, oh, it was some damage, but it was nothing. And then they said, well, it was some damage, but this group of Americans came over there and said, ah, oh, that's nothing. Just use their elbow and then everything was fixed. It was just not just, just a scratch, just a scratch. And, I know. and then they went back to Poland. Do you believe that? I think they just came to assess uh, is done. Keep the lid on. And you tell me they don't come and take care of the howizers or the tanks. 
uh, or the whatever uh, F-16s. I don't think the Ukrainians operate the F-16s. I don't think the Ukrainians operate the Patriot systems. I don't think the Ukrainians operate the um, uh, HIMARS. I don't think they, op they operate the Abrams, the uh, Challenger and the uh, Leopard 2 tanks. I don't think they do that. Why? Are you crazy? These guys can take that into Russia just like this and then the Russians have it on their plate. They, they already have certain tanks damage and so on, but like that, they're not going to do it. Remember, the Allies, the Americans don't allow the Poles, the Polish army or the Romanian army to even look at the air defense systems deployed in their country, in Poland and in Romania. Don't even look at them. They're all operated by the Americans. The Romanians come and take the garbage out or the Poles come and, I don't know, mop the floor or uh, clean the windows. That's the extent of the Romanians and the Poles involved in <clears throat> defending the eastern flank, flank of NATO. And do you think this guy's gonna give the Ukrainians that you don't even know what's going on over there uh, the latest, the Patriot systems to operate? I mean, you gotta be baboon to believe that. I tell you that. All right, let's see how much these guys destroyed of the Ukrainian thermal infrastructure. So, according to Russia Today, on 16th of October 2024, 90% of Ukraine's thermal power capacity destroyed. This is the Prime Minister. Kiev is trying to provide alternative solutions to cities particularly vulnerable to Russian strikes. Denis Zhmihal has said, oh, this is the Zhmihalstein, the Ukrainian Prime Minister of the Ukrainian nation. <laughs> and um, almost all, all of the Ukraine's thermal power generation capabilities have been destroyed by Russian long-range strikes. Prime Minister Denis Shmihal has said, adding that the country must now rely on substitutes. So that gives me, again, confirms what I've been saying uh, all along. The Russians are successful in destroying and hitting targets, not only kindergartens and hospitals and all this, and all nursery homes and so on. No, 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 no. They are successful. So when these guys are telling us, the operatives here in the West, and those guys in Ukraine tell us that, that um, 98 percent of the missiles were destroyed and just a some sharp nail fell over exactly the distribution uh, centers of energy or um, the thermal power plants and all that and they say well it's nothing there it's fixed it's been fixed they are lying I mean you don't expect them to tell you the truth right but you don't have to be a I don't know a genius to realize that they are lying why? Because in the next 48 hours, you find out from the same guys, you know, I know seven oblasts have no electricity. After the attack that was successful uh, in being defended by the Ukrainians. I mean, just, I mean, just um, see how low they think of your intellect and your memory. They think that in 48 hours, within 48 hours, not 48 hours, no, they do give you two days. Within, it could be, I don't know, 12 hours, could be 24 hours. Within 20, 48 hours, you and I forgot about the Russian missile and drone attack. Therefore, they can tell us that, oh, now about seven or eight oblasts, I don't know, 450,000 um, consumers are without electricity and running water. And you're like, oh, you don't, this is one dot and this is another dot. You, you can connect the dots, right? That's insulting, but it's good because people like you and I figure things out easier. So, writing on Telegram on Tuesday, Zmihal said Kiev is doing its best to increase energy sustainability, especially in frontline regions and areas bordering Russia. He added that cities that depend on large thermal power plants are especially vulnerable, given that Russia purposely attacked these types of facilities, destroying or damaging almost 90% of the all thermal power generation in the country. This is Zhmihal's uh, sneaky little uh, bazaar uh, sleight of the hand. That would um, give you the right to uh, give us the right to hit Russian targets deep inside Russia. See what they're doing? We just mirror that. All right. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong. Stay smart, look for the truth, and be just.